I feel like I'm in the middle of that. I'm in the middle of having fun on the road right now. And I'm trying to look at this quarantine as not like, hey, you're taking some of my fun away. I go, I, f- I feel like I'm extending my life. I'm extending, I'm getting to slow down for the first time in forever. I haven't drank in 21 days, no cigars, awesome. no weed. You. I feel good. I ran seven miles this morning. I feel like I, I'll, I'm, I'm going to see I'm going to see if I can run a marathon today throughout the day. Do you realize how funny it would be if you got in ridiculous shape? <laughs> then you do your next special, just and ripped. then you take your shirt off, totally ripped. Now you're not relatable anymore. Your whole audience be this fucking asshole. <laughs> what do you think you're gonna be the next Brad Pitt at forty, whatever the fuck you are? You know what's up with kettlebells, huh, guys? <laughs> yeah. You know you know because you, you know when you're on your last set of squats, you're not you won't be relatable at all. All my uh, all my all my references are like. And I walk in, and my wife's looking at me the way the way that that a, a squat rack looks at you when you walk in. You know what I'm talking about, right, guys? <laughs> Pat 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 McAfee and AJ. You know AJ Hawk. AJ Hawk. No, it's a that's, that's a fucking action hero name from like oh shit, right? That's like a movie name. Pat McAfee. AJ Hawk. AJ, AJ Hawk has a podcast called The Hawkcast. He's on. Um, he's on. Uh, He's he used to play for the Packers, and uh, linebacker for the Packers, long blonde hair, ponytail. Um, you remember him? If you saw a picture, well, the guy of, I'm thinking about got traded to another team who had the long blonde hair was always sacking people for the Packers. Might be AJ Hawk. He might have, he might have gotten traded. But anyway, we were on a chat thread this morning, and uh, and and Segura and they and AJ said. Uh, I said, I'm getting on my treadmill. And AJ Hawk just very like, you know, this is right in my wheelhouse. He goes, got a buddy that tried to run 24, what, run 50 miles in 24 hours. You think you could do that, Bert? And oh, Bill, I st- immediately I start doing the math. I go, okay, 50 miles. In 50 24 miles. hours? That's 24 hours. like, that's more than two miles in an hour. It's, it's way, yeah, well, yeah, obviously. But you well, you're up for 24 hours. No, you got, it's going to be 15 hours of running. That's the way I look at it. 15 hours of running. So you just got to go six in the morning, six at night, and then push it until as long as you can go. Bert, don't do that. I'm going to do it. For, well, the first thing you need to do is you need to go to Costco and get a giant vat of Vaseline. <laughs> and you need to just do the whole undercarriage here because your balls... Your balls don't do don't tell that balls get chafed just running a marathon. Yeah, no, you put you put glide on the, the glide stuff they have. There's no chafing whatsoever. We were we were, when I ran the LA marathon, I ran it with with uh, Jesus Trejo. Do you you know Jesus Trejo? I love Jesus. You ran the marathon, dude. That's amazing. I ran the LA marathon with no training. I had said to Rogan I could do it, and he was like, "You can't do it." And I was like, "I I definitely can do it." And Ari, him, and John, and Tom were all like, "You can't do it." And then they were like throwing out times that I couldn't beat. And I was like, I can do it. No training. So I went out, no training, ran the what LA no, marathon. What does no training mean? You weren't even jogging. Like, didn't, didn't, didn't train for a marathon. I just went out and did it. Like, what I did you run it in? Like seven hours, six hours? Five hours and 33 minutes. Dude, that's a killer time. It's not, well, it's not, Oprah did it in like 420 or something, but, but she trained for yeah, it. Yeah, but she has, she has billionaire sneakers, dude. I did it with just willpower. I just said, I will, I can, I will be in this spot moving for, I will put one foot in front of the other foot for the next five hours, six hours. That's it. That's all I did. I just said, it was amazing how once you decide you're not going anywhere, but here, here's where you're going to be for the next six hours. And this is what we'll do for the next six hours. It's amazing how it doesn't fuck with your head. You just kind of go, so this is it, you know, this is where we're going to be. But the funny part of this is they give out they give out food and drinks throughout the marathon. So we're in Silver Lake running downhill, rage against the machines in my headsets. Jesus is next to me, and I say to him, Jesus, uh, Jesus probably trained as little as I did, and he I beat him. Jesus, I go, if they give you anything, eat it or drink it. Like, do not – don't think, like, oh, I'm good. Whatever they give you, just take it. He went, really? I said, 100%. And I see someone – with a tongue depressor full of Vaseline to put on your nipples. Jesus grabs it. Into his oh! oh, no. Like, it's got no flavor. 
Oh, God. I am crying, laughing, like coughing. I'm laughing so hard going, Jesus, you're not supposed to eat that. He goes, you told me to eat everything. <laughs> what was that, like mile 16 or 17? No, it wasn't. No, probably mile seven, mile six. Oh, that's even worse. Yeah, mile 13, mile 13 was the comedy store. What was it like when you came up the hill or, what, or down the hill or on the straight and you saw the finish line? Uh, that was on the PCH. It was- Did you cry? Oh, my kid, my kid, I'll, I'll cry telling you about it. My kids, my wife and my kids were on the PCH. They were cheering for me. I ran past them and I just started punching it. <laughs> it you, you go down, I think, I want to say it's San Vicente, but you go down and you hit the PCH oh and my turn goodness. left. And it was, I mean, it was like wind, ocean wind in your face. My wife and kids, and I'm just, I'm Instagramming stories. Just, yeah, I'm doing it. Cross the finish line. Everyone knew. I mean, like, I put it out so much on social media that there were people on the street going, the machine, ice cold waters. The machine. People dressed in machine shirts. Oh, that's awesome. Playing, come on, I got you, Bert, playing electric guitar with one amp. Dude, it was so cool, Bill. So many people were waiting on the side, signs for me. And then when I run, I see my, my da- wife and daughters. That my wife and daughters are like, I can't believe you fucking did this. Like, I left at like four in the morning, five in the morning. They were sound asleep. I just left. I'm running. My wife's texting me. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I'm doing great. I passed them. I crossed the finish line. Maybe one of the greatest feelings I've ever had. And this kid, one of the, all the kids are handing out medals. And he goes, I can't believe I get to do this. Puts it over and he goes, congratulations, machine. You have the Mickey Mantle gene. And I was like, I'm <laughs> falling. They put a fucking blanket on me. It was the greatest, man. It was That's so awesome. great. And immediately I couldn't walk. Like the second I stopped running, I could not walk. Yeah, I was, was going to say, how, how, uh, how messed up were you and for how long? Uh, for about, I was messed up pretty bad for about two weeks. Like the next day I couldn't get out of bed. Two weeks? Two weeks. I couldn't. I, I ended up gaining a bunch of weight because I couldn't do anything. I mean, I couldn't get I remember getting stuck on the toilet. I went to take a shit, and I couldn't get up off the toilet, like, wow. the next day. How much weight like, did you lose? Did, were you able to step on the scale? I gained six pounds. Running a marathon? Running a marathon because I ate everything. I ate everything they gave me. So I, it was, like, I burned even amounts of calories. And then I get back, and I'm like, fucking pizza beers i just i'm saying did you step on the scale after you ran it i stepped on the scale before i ran it and i stepped off the scale and i gained weight the after after the marathon not even eating pizzas i had a leanne got me a tall boy for the ride home like a beer so i drank a beer for the ride home lucky you didn't fucking die if you didn't train and and she probably should have been giving you something to replenish your fluids not something that's gonna make you dehydrated partied so hard the night before too I went out, and then I and I kept bragging. How old were you? It was like two years ago, forty-five. Dude, that was a that's an amazing story. That was really like a reckless. That was a you took a chance there, man. It was very reckless. I kept saying to people, I didn't train for this. Like we're at the beginning line. I'm with Jesus, and I got my phone out. I'm like, I'm like, how long did you train? The guy's like, uh, twelve weeks. I did a 13, 12 week program, and I was like, oh, cool. And he's like, how about you? I, and I just going, I didn't. He's like, what? And I said, I didn't. He's like, what did you do? I said, I took a shit before this, and that's about it. Did and he I, laugh? Yeah, everyone was laughing. They're like, you're not going to make it. And I was like, well, we'll see. And, uh, and it, was, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't as hard. The hardest part was running down Sepulveda. Like, because I don't even like driving down Sepulveda. And so, like, Sepulveda is just a shit street right next to the 405. And I saw this grown woman in front of me at mile probably 20, 22, 21. Shit her pants. I was going to say, did she shit? <laughs> oh, poor she thing. Shit her, she shit, she had like, a, like yoga pants type on, like tight pants on. And she shit, and it looked like a Band-Aid had fallen down and up. It went, it was, it happened, and I saw it come out, like press out, you know, like when water pushes through cotton, and then go down and up. It and had it, some force, it had some velocity. Yeah, and what I What happened was it hit, it was almost like blood splatter, it splatter except it was shit. Now... Let me ask you this. Did she keep going? Kept going. You got to marry that girl. (laughs) Okay? That is a keeper. Anybody can run 12 miles and shit themselves 
and get into a fucking, you know, a little fucking, whatever, those minivans and quit. Somebody who's going to keep going. Come on. That's some William Wallace shit. They were every man. People were falling off. Like it was like, it was, uh, uh, what's the, what's the movie TV show that shoots in Atlanta? The dead walking dead. People were just falling off on Sepulveda right before, I want to say right before San Vicente. I think that was, might be Santa Monica was the road that go, we ran down, but right before we took the left. And once you take the left, it's, it's one of those streets. It's got a median on it. And it's like one side goes one way, one side goes the other, and it goes right to the PCH. Right before we banged left, it was like 22 miles, and everyone started like cramping, legs freezing, falling off to the side. Everyone. And that's when my legs, my front, my front, my quads started uh, spasming. And I was like, oh, I understand why you train it for it now. It's like your muscles aren't ready for this kind of stress. Like they're just going, like, I don't know what to do. And so they started spasming, and I went, Oh, now I know why you trained for it. Wow, man, that's amazing. I, I, I think in my younger days I wanted to do that, but did I tell you the other day I tried to skip rope for the first time in forever? Yeah, you did. What? Was it? <laughs> first of all, I had completely lost the hand-eye coordinate, whatever the hell it was. It was like it was like I had never done it, and it was like God had turned up the gravity on Earth, and I just couldn't jump high enough to get this little ass fucking rope underneath me. And it took me like three rounds, <laughs> three rounds to finally get a little thing going. And then the next day, dude, my Achilles, my ankles, my feet, the arches of my feet for like five days. And I was just like, all right, got it, got it. Not jumping rope ever again. I'm too old to jump rope. I don't want, I don't want to get my feet and ankles back into shape to be able to do it at my age because I don't know what it's going to do to my knees and hips. So I kind of had to get out of my ego with the working out thing and be like, all right, your bench pressing days are over, skipping rope, pretending like you're going to be the next middleweight champion. You're not. You're just a dumb dad. So I have to do like, you know, like yoga, stretching, and just sort of like, like body weight exercises that, that is not too intense. 